Greetings, I'm Howard Gardner. I teach at the Harvard Graduate School of Education and want to say hello to all of you who are teachers of English and other languages uh, for your conference. Um, I was been asked to talk a bit about the field of mind, brain, and education. Um, I was one of the people who began that study at Harvard, uh, that line of work, um, over a decade ago, and I think we were genuine pioneers. And I have two messages to give to you. The first message is that uh, anybody who is involved in education should become literate in understanding something about the biology of the mind, which means knowing something about the brain, something about genetics. A um, hundred years ago, people needed to know about philosophy. Fifty years ago, people needed to know about psychology. Those are both important, but now, if you really are ignorant of the brain, the nervous system, um, different kinds of measures of brain activity, and increasingly if you're ignorant about genetics, you will be not part of the educational conversation. So that's the, the positive message, and I'm very glad to have been involved in the founding of the field of mind, brain, and education, the journal, and the learned society. The other message is a cautionary note. Um, educators have been working for thousands of years and we have developed lots of knowledge about what works and what doesn't work, how to deal with children, how to deal with people at different ages, um, how to deal with different subject matter, how to teach different topics. And that knowledge should not be easily scuttled. It shouldn't be easily thrown away. So while it's very important to know about what's being learned about the nervous system and about genetics, we should think twice um, about changing any teaching approach or any learning approach just because of new scientific knowledge. Often people say, oh, I'm going to teach kids in an involved way because when kids are involved, a certain area of the brain lights up. Well, sure, but uh, does this mean that you wouldn't teach kids in an involved way, in an engaged way, because of a certain area of the brain didn't work, didn't light up, or another area of the brain didn't light up? Of course not. If you believe in something, you've seen it work, that's, uh, that's, that's what you should continue to do. So I, as, a, as a scholar, I've been most interested in those findings about the mind and the brain, which go against common sense, and where if you knew something about the brain, you might really approach learning in a different kind of way. And, and so that's really my, my second message to you. And always you should ask yourself, does the brain evidence give you anything that psychology and common sense doesn't give you? So for example, you, know, you may find out that if uh, children are uh, um, six months old and they hear three different languages, they have a bit of a language delay, and you may find out that there is uh, a part of the brain that lights up differently. But even if it didn't, if you found that the kids um, uh, learn more slowly, then you'd think twice about exposing a child to three languages when they were six months old. On the other hand, if you um, find that certain areas of the brain light up when children hear two languages when they're growing up, and the children learn language as well, that's great, but you continue doing it even if the areas of the brain didn't light up. So um, I guess my, um, my takeaway message is learn about the brain, learn about genes, try to understand it, think about what the implications of practice might be, but never change your practice just because of some additional knowledge about the brain. Change your practice when you think there's a real reason why you should do things differently, and then check out whether it really works. Have a good conference.